And after the sacrifice, they eat the flesh and drink to life. Before the communists stepped in on this land, uh, people would walk back uh, poor or rich. There's no... I do vegetarian too. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Jason and Medea enter the sacred grove. Medea has prepared a magic potion from her herbs which she anoints on the eyes of the serpent to make it go to sleep. And then Jason takes the fleece down from the tree. In some versions, he actually kills the serpent. But in one ancient version, he seems to have been swallowed by it and is only regurgitated and brought back to life by the intervention of the goddess herself. And maybe that gives us a clue to the original form of the story. Perhaps, in origin, it's a kind of initiation story in which the young hero undertakes an impossible quest, enters the realm of death, and is redeemed only by the divine woman herself, whose lover he must become. So with the golden fleece in his hands, Jason swears by the everlasting gods he will be true to Medea forever. The ancient storytellers told many versions of Jason's return to Greece. Some took the Argo round the eastern part of the world and up through the deserts of Africa. Others through the frozen wastes of the Arctic, past Britain and through the pillars of Hercules. Apollonius says they went up the Danube and carried the Argo through Central Europe to the Mediterranean. But all agree that they arrived here at the little island of Anaphi, which the god Apollo made rise up to save them from a last storm. And there you might have thought the story ended. Jason and Medea go back to Greece swear undying love and live happily ever after. But Greek myths are not like that. It's given to few mortals to live happily ever after. Human beings can be almost children of the gods. They can fulfill every oracle protected by the queen of the gods herself. But if you overstep the mark, if you fail to show due reverence both to the gods and to your fellow human beings. If you break your most solemn vows, then fate will catch up with you, and your true destiny will be revealed. So Jason returned to Iolcos with the Golden Fleece and his bride, Medea. His wicked uncle, King Peleus, was astonished to see him. But Medea used her magic to destroy Peleus. She persuaded his daughters that they could rejuvenate him if they chopped him up and boiled him in a cauldron. So Peleus died. Jason was made king, and the oracle was fulfilled. For a while, they prospered, and Medea had three sons. But the people of Iolcos were afraid of Medea and her witchcraft, and in the end, they drove Jason and his family into exile. They came south to Corinth. 
This is where the story enters the most cruel and dark side of human nature. It's the bit that they never tell in the Hollywood and TV versions, but it's the bit that makes it a great Greek myth rather than just a fairy tale. Here in Corinth, the famous Jason was made king. He was offered a beautiful young princess as a wife, and he accepted and broke his solemn promise to Medea. Now, of course, Medea was a larger-than-life character. She had gods among her ancestors as well as humans and her passions were correspondingly extreme. In revenge for what her husband had done, she murdered their children. Medea's crime, you might think, is a pure creation of the poets. And so it is, except for a strange discovery in a lonely bay just over the water from Corinth. The ancients connected those events with a headland where there was a temple to Hera, the queen of the gods, a temple dedicated by Medea herself, and the tomb of the murdered children, and a weird statue of a frightening woman simply known as the Terror. And Medea's punishment, she was immortal, and the gods protect their own. They took her back to Mount Olympus and gave her a new husband, the great Achilles himself, a true hero. And as for Jason, well, he ends the story as he began it, alone in the world with one sandal. And he wanders back to Iolcos, to the thing that made his fame, his old boat, the Argo itself, whose rotting hulk was now lying on display by the seashore. And sitting weeping in its shadow, the magic beam, the speaking prow, crashes down on his head and kills him. Made by the gods, destroyed by the gods, his destiny had been fulfilled. <laughs>